Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Preacher Scott from New Home Baptist Church coming to you with our Wednesday night Bible study. I hope you've had a good week, and uh, I know there's a lot still going on. We say that each and every time that we get together, but um, tonight I want to touch a little bit on love and and the whole idea of, of still having love even in the midst of all that we're being bombarded with each and every day. I hope that uh, you are able at some point in each and every day to, to kind of get away from the chaotic situations and sort of get away from the news, get away from your phones, uh, sort of reflect on what God's doing in your life and also uh, just, just let God's love and his heartbeat just kind of calm you and, and and calm your anxieties and just let you know that he's in control he's still loving he's still out there saving people he's still the great physician he's he's healing folks all around us and there are some wonderful great positives going on around us that sometimes are overshadowed by the negatives because we tend to focus on the negative i want to start uh, tonight by saying that i've always been an athletic guy. I was very small when I was younger and in high school. I, I was tried to play a lot of sports and I was really good at track and cross country. But then I tried to tried to play baseball and and played football and um, even today, you know, I see I'm wearing my NC State shirt and try to keep up uh, with with most all athletics that that we can and. You know, right now that's not hard to do because there's not a lot going on. So it will be good when uh, our sports teams get, get back able to play and that kind of thing. But at an early age, I realized that, you know, sports was, was just one little small portion of your life. It, it should not encompass everything. It should not guide your lifestyle each and every day. And that should not be what you live for. Uh, but I'm thinking back to when I was in high school, you know, it it wasn't popular really to to show out that you were a Christian. Um, it really wasn't popular to be seen reading of God's Word or maybe praying or, you know, you just didn't talk about it much. And if there's some young people watching tonight, I, I pray that you know that that is a good thing. That's a good thing to show that you are in tune with God and that He's in tune with you and that you have a a loving personal relationship with him but that's also pretty tough at times and i remember as a senior playing football i was real small probably 110 115 pounds you know i probably had no business being out there but i loved it and and uh, that particular year we'd had a good season as as a junior and coming off of the heels of that having a new coach as a senior and, and we were looking forward to having a great year. And we started off the season uh, with about 30 kids on the varsity squad. And by the end of the season, we probably had only around 18. Many had quit. Some have gotten hurt. We had a just a, a rough year. We only won one game, and it was homecoming game and, and triple overtime. We won it off a of field goal, and we hardly ever kicked field goals. But, you know, I remember – and being one of the smallest guys on the team, but if no matter what your skill level was, if you were committed to the team, you played a lot, and you played both ways. And and I punted some. Uh, I was back there on kickoff returns and punt returns and played a little bit of halfback and receiver, but mainly I played on defense and played safety. And I tried to give it all that I had. And, and when I hit someone, I tried to hit them with all that I had. And and I remember the uh, the games were rough, as I said, and, and, you know, we didn't win, but that won. But we were in each and every game except maybe one or two. But, you know, I remember the practices more so than the games. And I remember that group of guys. Now, although, you know, we didn't especially hang around and like each and every one, but we became a brotherhood. And that's kind of how football does on most any team. You, you became a... You become a tight-knit group that you kind of know what each other's thinking, you know what each other's jobs are, and you rely on that other guy. And yeah, I might beat you around some, I might hit you pretty hard in, in practice and that kind of thing, but I'd take up for you in the midst of anybody else bothering you. 
And you know, we had big guys and we had kind of medium guys. We probably had guys over 200 pounds. And then you had guys like myself, you know, they were real small. And I remember uh, the hitting and the warm ups, the exercises, and all those things. I remember scrimmaging. And then I remember on uh, Thursdays before your games on Friday, you know, you came out without any pads. You might wear your helmet. You kind of went through your routine at the plays and all that you were going to run on Friday. And you warmed up to one another. And I always remember running at the end. We always finished running laps. And uh, me being a track guy, you know, I could run like nobody else. And I would lap the guys and that kind of thing. You'd be coming up on them, they'd say, Balkum, I'm going to tell you one more time, if you lap me again, I'm gonna, it's gonna, not going to be good for you. You know, you need to slow down. You're making us look bad and all those things. But one of the activities that I remember the most, and if you're watching this and you've played football, maybe you played with me, but we had an activity called bull in the ring. You remember that? Everybody got in a circle, and when the coach called out a name, if he called out Scott, go to the center, or, or maybe he'd say Balkum, go to the center. Well, when he would call a guy's name on the outside, he was to come and hit you, you know? And he was to hit you hard. You know, you, you wanted to toughen up. You wanted to, to find out how you stacked up against the guys and it was an agility drill to make you stronger, tougher, faster, and better, and more prepared mentally too, because you got a mindset of who was where. And when he called that name, you wanted to turn as quickly as you could and face that guy. Shoulders broad and straight ahead, you wanted to face that guy. You didn't ever want to get in a situation where you were looking for him and he was behind you, cause he could, take you out and could hurt you. You know, you always wanted to be prepared. But they could come at you according to how quickly the coach called names. They could come at you one right after the other. So as soon as one hit you, another one could. And But I'm going to tell you, the, the, the thoughts that you've got in your mind, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like guys were running in as hard as they could trying to hurt someone, take them out. No, they wanted to square up and hit you solid. But we were a brotherhood. And when those big guys would come in, they weren't trying to take me out and laugh at me and poke fun at me. No, they did it respectably. And they come in, they hit me hard, they give them the forearm shiver, and but they might be holding me up to keep me from going down. Or they might throw their hand out and pull me right up if I went down. Or they might pop me on the helmet and say, good job, you know, you, you made a good hit. I remember that just like it was yesterday. And I remember the tightness of that group of young men that we had together. And although we only won that one game that year, we were committed to one another. Some of us have continued to be lifelong friends and we still talk about those things to this day. You know, that's kind of the way life is today. We're kind of a bull in the ring, so to speak. We're in the middle and things is coming at us from all different avenues. We got, we got the virus, we got the sicknesses, we, we got all this going on uh, with racial issues and uh, so, so many things out there that sometimes we don't know which way to turn. We don't know what's coming next. And we, we swell up with all kinds of worries, bothers, concerns we have deceit in our hearts at times we we may be short and hateful with people all because of what's going on all around us and yes it does make us tougher but i don't mind telling you sometimes if if you're like me it breaks our hearts and the last two mornings when i've gotten up i kind of feel like that that god's right there in the midst of every bit of that with us. And we treat him like that. You know, even though God's in the center, he should be in the center of our lives. He's in control of everything, but yet we come at him with all different prayers, all different concerns. We break his heart with our sins. We destroy the relationship that we build up with the Father and Jesus with our sinful, selfish attitudes. 
And then we bust out the door in the morning to a society that doesn't love us like God does. We try to put on a smiling, happy face. But a lot of times we're not able to do that because of the destruction that's going on within our own lives. As I've thought about that the last few days, I really feel like we don't do what we should as Christians to help soften these blows for others. You know, you remember in God's word about the alabaster box. Mary had an alabaster box with expensive perfume and ointment in it. And she came and she rubbed it on Jesus' feet. And then she washed and wiped his feet with the hairs of her head. She blessed Jesus with something that she had, expensive perfume. You know, God has blessed us with something much, much more expensive than perfume or ornaments. He's blessed us with all kinds of abilities and talents. And sometimes we're guilty of holding those in and not blessing others with what he's given us. We have reached a time in society that so much can be done today by just a smile, just a word of encouragement. Yeah, we're not shaking hands now, but we can do a fist pump or a, a high five at a distance and say, hey man, I hope you have a great day. God loves you and I love you. And we can still carry on conversations at our six foot distance. We still wanna be mindful of the virus and what could occur. But so many times we have, a, we have a word of encouragement on our lips and we just don't share it. I picked out some scriptures and I, if you have your Bibles, I'd love for you to go and join me. And you know, I want to start in, in, in 1 John chapter 2. In, in John's gospel and in John's letters, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, man, he's all about talking about love. And he's talking about what Jesus has done for us. And I want to start... In 1 John chapter 2, beginning in verse 15, and it's really talking about not loving the world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Then I want to flip over in chapter 3, beginning in verse 11. And this speaks of our love for one another. Let's see what he says. This is the message that you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. Who belonged, and, and why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil, and his brother had been doing what was righteous. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. That's pretty hard to swallow right there. And you know what, and you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need, but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? I hope that we are faithful enough to God in our daily walk that we do show compassion. Don't have a hardened heart. Have a heavy heart, that heart that, that hurts when others hurt. You know, I've, I've really been hurting this week because I know of so many that are hurting and I want to do more to be able to help. I want to, to be able to pray that their needs are met. I want to be able to, to meet them on life's journey and, and throw my hand out and be of assistance to them. And, 
And sometimes that's, that's very difficult. I have a book of quotes from, uh, from Reverend Billy Graham, and I picked out some just to share with you today. I go to this book very often. The first one is a quote about encouragement. It says, the Bible teaches us to be more concerned about the needs and feelings of others than our own. We are to encourage and build self-confidence in our loved ones, friends, and associates. You know, with all the rioting that we see going on, there's not much self-confidence being built right there. You know, we, we should be able to, to show our confidence in God and help others come to know that same realization. The second one I picked out is about grace. It says the grace of God has been tested in the crucible of human experience and has been found to be more than equal for the problems of sin and humanity, meaning God can handle it all. And finally, I picked up two more talking about love. What relationships need strengthening in your life? Now, remember, these are quotes from Billy Graham. Don't wait for them to grow cold or bitter, but ask God to help you strengthen them by putting God's love into action. Then he ends that by saying, begin today. He goes on to say, Christians are commanded to love our neighbors. And the first step in doing this is to show a watching world that Christ reigns within us. Folks, that nearly brings tears to my eyes. I hope we are doing a good job showing that Christ lives within us. So many times we get so busy about our own lives that we don't show that love. Very troublesome. And we should take the opportunity right now just to just to fall on our knees and ask for forgiveness. I want to finish with the scripture from Joshua 1, beginning in verse 7 and going through verse 9. Joshua 1, verse 7. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Being that guy in the bull in the ring, you had to constantly be turning and looking and prepared, hoping that your brotherhood, who's bringing the smack down on you, love you enough not to take you out and hurt you, but give you a good swift pop and say, hey man, I love you. You're doing a good job here. Man, wouldn't it be great to hear that in the circles that we frequent today? He goes on to, to say, study this book of instruction continually, talking about God's word of the Bible. Meditate it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Very, very reassuring words. There's a song on the radio by a, a group called Vertical Worship and is entitled, Yes, I Will. They played on 91.9 K-Love. And it's a little bit repetitive, but I want to read to you what it says. It says, I count on one thing. The same God who never fails will never fail me now. You won't fail me now. In the waiting, the same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Then it has a chorus, and we'll come back to that. Then he goes back with the same verse again. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. In the waiting, the same God who's never late is working all things out. And then the bridge says, and I choose to praise, 
to glorify, to glorify the name of all names that nothing can stand against. He does that three times. But the chorus is most touching, the yes, I will part. I want to challenge you tonight to say, yes, I will. Continue showing the love of God. Continue telling people what he's done for me. Continue showing others the difference that Christ has made in my life. And maybe, just maybe, I can bring a smile to their faces. Maybe I can give them some re-encouragement that they've been missing. Maybe I can have compassion enough to show them how much I care. The chorus goes like this. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for all my days oh yes i will for all my days yes i will i want to thank you for taking time to join in with us tonight god bless you and when you feel like that bull in the ring just realize that god is with you and you have a brotherhood of Christians all around you that want to be helpful unto you and want to be able to show their love to you. Hey, I hope you and I can be the bearers of light each and every day in a dark world and show our love wherever we are. God bless you. Take care. Have a good rest of your week.